is the BBC Home Service. Here is the news. During the first few moments of this bulletin, war is coming to its official end. I remember London before the war with its palm court music, its flappers and its foggy charm suited me better than Paris or Vienna, but then everything changed. And going back is always difficult, especially if you're going home. It wasn't just that the city was different and hard to remember, but because of the bombing, the air was, I don't know, different as well. Strange to think of war as glamorous, but it was, you know. And that was what London lacked, glamour. Some went back to what they had before, but many of us couldn't settle. We became drifters, displaced people, so we hung together, sort of friends. Oh, I was going to tell you, wait, I was going to tell you about Leonard. Leonard was one of them, friends, I mean, a decent enough chap, you know, but a lost boy. Yes, Leonard drifted, poor chap, and drifting he became caught in a net, and the more he struggled, the deeper he was enmeshed. That was Leonard. Those who have any business before the Central Criminal Court in the case of the Crown versus Vole, draw near and give your attendance. God save the King. Oh, God. Somebody please help me. You are Leonard James Vole? Yes. Leonard Vole, you are charged with the murder of Emily Wilton French on the night of April the 23rd, 1947. How do you plead? Not guilty. He insinuated himself into her life. He took advantage of her age. He was after her money. Witness for the Prosecution by Agatha Christie with Howell Bennett, Miriam Margulies, Stephen Moore and Anthony Bate. He's awfully good, I think. When you've had a shock. I'm so silly. Really? I'm trying to carry too much. I got flustered. <laughs> Look, will you be all right getting home? Oh, yes. You have been awfully kind. Please, it was nothing. There we are. And I don't know your name. Vole. Leonard Vole. I am Miss French. Miss French? Why don't... Why don't you come for tea? Um, I... On Sunday. Well... Oh, I insist. I mean, I must thank you properly. Leonard, darling, what are you doing sitting out here? I was worried you'd catch cold. Does it matter? To me, of course, darling. Oh, this is ridiculous. Darling, please. What can I give you, hmm? I'm broke. No prospects. I survived Vienna. Vienna, I know. <sighs> Leonard, the war is over. Things will change. Come home. Be warm. I love you. You must call me Emily, Leonard. Well... If you... Right. Right. Yes? Will you require anything else, ma'am? No. Thank you, Flora. You should have your afternoon rest. But I'm enjoying agreeable company, Flora. Aye, ma'am. <clears throat> oh, go on, another pint. I'm buying. Decent of you, George. Two pints the best. So she's taken a fancy to you. Well, steady on. She must be 60. She just, I don't know, keeps inviting me. And you know me. Can't say no to anyone. Which is why you always find yourself in trouble. Here you are. Cheers. Believe it or not, I've grown rather fond of her. Reminds me? Well, she reminds me of my aunt. The one who brought me up. Strangely enough, I knew the family. Oh? Well, the nephew. Bit of a waster. Wasted enough of her money. 
money. Oh, don't be fooled by the faded genteel. She has oodles of it. Rationing won't hurt her. I think she showed him the door. Don't know where he is now. Her only relative. Cat's home will probably get it. Shame, eh? Drink up. The war's over. Flora? Mr. Vole. I'll take your coat. I wonder you don't bring your wife sometimes on your visit, sir. She will be most welcome. We're... we're not seeing each other. Haven't for a long time. Ah, uh, is that so? Is that Leonard? Bring him in. Don't leave him standing, Flora. Honestly. Uh, yes, ma'am. After you, Mr. Vole. I'm but you're able to take some profit. As long as I'm helping. I wouldn't know where to begin with investments. Stocks, bonds. These days it's all so difficult. I know. I have no skill in business. And you are so clever about it. Lucky, I think. Well, I rely on you. And I do want you to prosper. It can be difficult for a young man to make his way. If I had a son, I'd do the same. Now, you are going to come and see me on the 23rd in the evening, aren't you? I shall be upset if you don't. Of course. Flora will be out, seeing a friend or something. For once, she won't be harumphing round the place. She does rather harumph. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Celt in her. It's built into the accent. A natural lilt of disapproval, don't you think? I'm afraid she does rather disapprove of me. Yes, well, I'll pay no attention. I always want to see you. The 23rd, then. Of course. Hello, Emily. It looks rather bad for me, doesn't it? Well, we'll see. Now, what you need is a brandy. What I need is a miracle. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think I'm pretty clear about your relationship with Miss French. Sit down a moment. What I'd like to do, I think, now is go over again your movements on the night. Look, I've said. I know. But what concerns me for you, frankly, is the presence of this new will. Will? What will? Her will. You didn't know about it? No, I didn't. The new will Emily French made on the 20th, naming you principal beneficiary. Oh, God. She left it all to me. God almighty. Thing is, you honestly claim you know nothing of it. There's no claim about it. I didn't know. Flora Mackenzie will testify that you did, old man. Yes, well... She says that Miss French told you of her intention. <sighs> The fact that you never tried to take a dishonest advantage in handling her finances is in your favour. But then again, why should you? I mean, if you stood to inherit... Good God, this is awful. I feel as if I'm drowning. This is why the police were... Yes, quite. I swear to you, I went to the house at half past eight as arranged. There was no answer. I mean, I knocked loudly. So I went home. Did they tell you what else happened that night? They wanted me to confess that I'd gone and killed her, but I didn't. As it happens, I believe you. Good God, Mahern, you're my solicitor. If you don't, what hope do I have? The matter of Flora Mackenzie's evidence is vital. She never liked me. Enough to lie about you? No. No, I, I couldn't say that. Well, at least you're honest about it. Miss Mackenzie will say, I gather, that... Uh, she came back to the house briefly that evening, something about a forgotten knitting pattern for her friend, and then went out again without disturbing Miss French because she heard her in her room in conversation with a man. So when was this? Um, about 9.30. I don't believe it. Well, you may not, but... No, no, I, I, I mean, I was at home. I was at home at 9.30. 
I'm saved. Can anyone corroborate that? My wife? The wife you pretended to be separated from. Anyone else? No, but I didn't do it. I couldn't have done it, could I? Then who did, Leonard? I don't know. A burglar. I mean, look, a window was forced. There was a crowbar by the body. Some valuables were missing. It was pretty obvious. Think again, Leonard. Miss French was unlikely to have a friendly chat with a burglar. Then I don't know. But they have to find him. I swear, I was at home at half past nine. I'm an alibi. My wife will tell you, at least talk to her. I intend to. <sighs> Look here, old man, I, I have to ask you this. Are you fond of your wife? Yes. I love her. And she? She's devoted to me. She'll save me. She'll do anything in the world for me. Hmm, I was rather afraid of that. Cigarette, Mr. Mahon. Best the black market can offer. Uh, no, thank you. Um, uh, I know this must be very difficult for you. Please, do not think to spare me. I want to know the worst. I must know the worst. It is very serious. I would like to walk in the park. We can be private. By all means. If I say he came back at half past nine, will that save him? Will it be enough, my testimony alone? Well, it will help. But not enough. Uh, Mrs. Vole, I know what you must feel. Do you? In the circumstances. I... In the circumstances, I intend to play a lone hand. I'm sorry? I can't worry about him. But surely, being devoted to your husband. He told you that? The truth is, I hate him. I would not care if he was hanged. Mrs. Vole, you are overwrought. I understand. Oh, men I... are so stupid. Suppose I told you that he came back at 20 past 10 with blood on his coat. Huh? Suppose I told you that he confessed to what he had done. Suppose I told you that he knew all about the will. Suppose I said all that in court. What then? A wife cannot be asked to give evidence against her own husband. He is not my husband, Mr. Mayhem. Do you mind if we sit down? I think you'd better explain. I was an actress in Vienna. Quite a good one, actually. Then there was the war. My husband was put in a camp. It broke his health, but he's still alive in a sanatorium. I met Leonard when he was in the army. He was in supplies, <laughs> the black market. He was a crook then. I came to England with him, anything to escape Vienna. Mrs. Uh, I'm sorry, whatever your name is, uh, this, this bitterness for Leonard Vole. Where does it come from? I have no need to tell you. No, but... I want to go home now. Then I suppose there's no purpose in prolonging this. I will consult with my client, of course. Tell me this. What? Did you believe him innocent before you came here today? Yes, I did. You poor man. And I believe so still. Good day, madam. I will see you in court. Do I have to stay here? Unless you can get the judge to change his mind, you do. No bail, he said. Ah, oh, only two weeks. Then you get your big day in court. Get used to it, son. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Can anyone help me?
Bad business, Mayhem. I'm afraid so. The Austrian woman's testimony is critical, of course. Yes. If we could shake that, we might do something. Even so, the chap's character is all against him. I mean, if he'd had a good war, but procurement and supplies in Vienna, on the fiddle. I know. Then suddenly nothing to do, can't settle. I've seen a lot of them. You've a rogue on your hands, Mayhem. But is he a guilty rogue? <laughs> Not for me to say. I shall certainly defend him as though he weren't. I can't help but believe that he's the victim here. Some plot that he's innocent. Possible. We'll do our best, but proving it, well... Oh, I don't know. Think, man, think. She must have known other men. Men she might have dined with, someone else. I am thinking. It's going round and round in my head. It's this business of motive. Other men. No one of any importance. There was a nephew, Nephew? But... Yes. How do you know? You've never mentioned him. No one has. Why should they? She disowned him. Yes, it, it's coming back to me. It, it, it was just a casual conversation. Who with? With George Harvey. George Harvey? Write this down. How I wish I could forget. I hope you don't mind meeting in the club. I've got to be on duty. Care for a cocktail? No, thank you. Introduce I... you to a couple of the girls uh, after, no, if you no, like. No, uh... Now, what can I do to help poor old Leonard? Look, he I... never had much sense. Knew him from the war. <whistles> She's good, isn't she? Miss French, you knew the family. Only the nephew. Another good time, Johnny. In fact, that was his name, Johnny. Where can I find him? Oh, he's not been around for a long while. Sure you won't have a cocktail? No, thank We you. do a snorter called the Cuckoo Clock. That's what you start doing after three of them. Johnny! <laughs> oh, yeah, not sure I can help you. Give her a hand, old man. She deserves it. Come on, I'll introduce you to Ruth. No, thanks. Leonard, I'd like to help you. Don't like to see you here. Reminds me of Marylebone. Frightful hangovers in the morning, standing up before the beak. I'm going mad. Buck up. He should have said no to the Viennese pastry. She was everything to me. She was my wife. As good as. You have to find Johnny. He could be anywhere, old man. And you've got, what, less than two weeks? Just find Johnny. I'll try Brighton. Always a good place to start. Water! I'm leaving. Here's the post, Mr. Mayhem. Thank you. Uh, there's one very odd one. I didn't read it. The handwriting's so bad, I doubt anyone could. Oh, thank you. Uh, a cup of tea? Mmm, lovely. Uh, dear Mr... If you want that foreign hussy showed up, come to... Got it two hundred pounds. Mrs. Mogson Stepney. Excuse me, Constable. I wonder if you could help. Yes, sir. Shaw's Rents. Do you have any idea where? Shaw's Rents. That's an entry, sir. Uh, just up there on your left. Thank you. Uh, uh, not the most smartest of situations, sir. Not for a gentleman like yourself. Oh, I'll be fine. Thank you. You mind how you go, sir? I'm looking for a Mrs. Mogson. Well, you should have said so. Is she here? Who's looking for her? I have urgent business with Mrs. Mogson. I'm a solicitor. She's ex... <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Mayhern? <laughs> Come in. Hmm? The same. Right. Oh, it's very dark in here, isn't it? I can see you. And your suit and tie. I can't give you a drink. I don't want a drink, thank you. Hmm. Might have some tea left. Uh, nothing, thanks. I received a letter. A bastard. He was a bastard. Left me. Left me for her. What? Did this to me. So I cover up my face. Stay in the dark. Hide me beauty. <laughs> Here. Have a look. Good God. Vitriol. Acid in my face. Scarred me for life. He did it. To go off with her. Who? Ah. Cost you 200 nickel, that, to know. Does this relate to the case of Leonard Vole? To Romain Heilger, that Viennese tart. What am I buying? Look here, I must have evidence. I mean, a story's worth nothing without... 200. <sighs> Bye. 
five, ten, fifteen. I'm showing you more. You must show me. I got a letter. Show me. See for yourself. Love letters from her to him. Look at the date on the last one. The day of the murder. You ask her. Home after ten, you ask her. How do you come by this information? She took him from me. I followed them. He did this to me, but I followed them. Revenge? Maybe. And money. Here's another ten. <sighs> Not enough. Then I'll take it all back and leave. Bastard! Tell me what you know and confine yourself to the truth. I speak as I find. A tree is a tree is a tree where I come from. Go on. The cameo cinema, Camden. You'll find somebody saw them there, her and him. Ten o'clock that night, the night of the murder. Time she said she was home. How can I find this man? There's only a Christian name. Werner. That's him, Werner. Sorry? Uh, Werner. That's the way they say it, them foreigners. He's Polish. Fought for you lot in the... Fighter pilot. Bastard. You have to make her suffer like I suffered. She done it all for him. Thank you. Hey, the money. <laughs> My 200 quid. 20, 25, and another. 30. Or I'll call you in as a public witness. Oh, bastard! Sorry, old man, not a dicky bird. Our bird has flown. No Johnny. We have no time. I'm desperate. She'll finish me. Wish I could help her. Now, let's see, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 23rd of April, the commissionaire would have been uh, Walter. May I speak with him? Oh, he's gone. Where? No idea. Law unto himself, young Walter. Sorry. George, I need your help. Ah, now, Ruth is very good company. No, I, I want you to find someone. <laughs> Not that much luck in that department. A cinema commissionaire. That's a little more my line. Tell me more about him. <laughs> We're doing all we can. The trial is tomorrow. Chin up, eh? I'm drowning. I'm drowning here. Shut it. Shut it. Shut it. Walter. It is Walter, isn't it? Find the sea air bracing, do you, down in Clack? Get off me. Who are you? Oh, well, these two chaps, don't worry about them. Friends of mine. Well, local acquaintances. Very helpful. What do you want? I want to show you a photograph of a beautiful lady. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Heilger, you are certain that after Leonard Vole had washed the blood from him, confessed you its cause, and threatened you if you did not keep silent about his murderous deeds of that night, you are absolutely sure that this was after ten o'clock? Yes, I'm quite sure. In the flat both of you shared? Yes, that is as I have told you. I remind you that you are under oath. Mrs. Heilger, you do not wish to change any part of your evidence. Why? Why should I? A tree is a tree is a tree. No? Thank you, Mrs. Heilger. Good God. A tree is a tree is a tree. Where I come from. With your Lordship's leave, the defence calls its next witness, Walter Swinley. And do you see here... In this courtroom, the woman who came to your cinema, the Cameo Cinema in Camden, on the night of the 23rd at 10 o'clock? Yes. <laughs> Would you be good enough, please, to point to her? That lady, Romaine Hauger. You couldn't mistake a lady as lovely as that. At 10 o'clock that night? Yes, sir. Accompanied by another man, not Leonard Vole. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Swindley. <laughs> My lord, the defence wishes to recall Romaine Heilger. <gasps> well done, old man. Always knew you didn't do it. Free and clear, eh? I know. Hard to believe. Never doubted it. Time for some fizz, I think. Wash the taste of that Viennese pastry out of your mouth. Won't be a moment. Job well done, I'd say, Mayhem. Close shave, but uh, interesting. Come and see him. The person I want to see is Romaine Halger. Yes. Not a woman I'd choose to encounter on a dark night. Uh, I think I did. Uh, Mrs. Vole. What? That indeed. You are a, well, a consummate actress. I have nothing to say to you. I know. 
I mean, I know who you are. As you say, an actress. But unfortunately, my English... Please don't insult me. I know about you. Meaning? Oh, really, Mrs. Vole. The unsteady Cockney accent, the hiding in the shadows, the odd turn of phrase. I mean, a tree is a tree is a tree, wouldn't you say? So? <laughs> you guessed. I see everything, I see nothing. Why, though? Why did I play a lone hand? I, I, I remember now, you said that. I had to save Leonard, you see? The evidence of a woman devoted to him by itself would not be enough. I had to be discredited to save him. And... Werner? Werner? <laughs> a helpful friend. Oh, it's over, Mr. Mayhem. No. No, it is not. You will go to prison for perjury. Oh, Mr. Mayhem, what is that? After Vienna, he rescued me. I owed him everything, you see. What is a year or so compared to a lifetime? <sighs> but why such an elaborate comedy? I'm sure we could have proved him innocent. You thought he was innocent? Yes. So Well, naturally, there's always a possibility. As you say. Still, you were all I expected of an English gentleman. Oh, of course, I see. Well, I suppose I can't blame you. After all, you knew he was innocent. Oh, no, Mr. Mayhem. No, no. I knew he was guilty. <laughs> Goodbye. Witness for the Prosecution by Agatha Christie was dramatised by Bill Morrison. Leonard Vole was played by Howell Bennett, Romaine and Mrs. Mogson by Miriam Margulies, Mayhern by Anthony Bate, and George by Stephen Moore. Simon Treves played Sir Charles, Diana Fairfax was Miss French, and Sheila Allen was Flora. Witness for the Prosecution was produced by Bruce Hyman, directed by Dirk Maggs, and was an above-the-title production for